I remember when you booked your Calendly, it said something about sleep, like you wanted to learn more about sleep. You had some oh, questions right. About it. Yeah, you mentioned that. I, I didn't watch any videos about that, but um, I, I did want to learn about that also. Yeah. No, it's yeah. interesting that you mentioned that because I've been thinking for a while now to make a video about sleep. Guys, my name is Eric. Can I get a fuck you, Eric? like smiling like just talking about it deliciously my mom coined that term delicious sleep is this sleep where you when you wake up you can just kind of taste it. you're like mmm I want another bite you want to go back to sleep and taste that delicious sleep again without further ado this video is about delicious sleep it's how to get it every single night and it's not as hard as you think all right before I get into the seven steps for that recipe of delicious sleep this is like a cooking channel now right over here this is the kitchen before we get into that, I just want to make a couple important points about sleep in general, okay? One, sleep is a big fucking deal, okay? If you work a 9 to 5 job, it takes up the same amount of time as your day job, okay? It takes up a third of your entire day, and it takes up a third of your entire life. A third of your entire life, a third of my entire life is spent laying down completely unconscious, not seeing anything, not feeling anything, not smelling anything, not tasting anything on this bed or wherever it is could be on like a park bench somewhere or in the middle of a casino, it doesn't matter. It's happening and nothing's happening for eight hours, all right? That's a big deal. I think sleep is vastly overlooked. I think I have some techniques that are really gonna help you achieve some delicious sleep today. And one last point before we get into it. The whole essence of this video, really, this stems vastly outside of sleep, is stacking your external environment in your internal environment's favor. You wanna arrange everything outside in your outer world in your inner world's favor. Okay, so that it can do its own work, so it can get out of your own way. All right, so let's begin. The first thing, the first big thing is blue light. Okay, step one, eliminate blue light about an hour before you go to sleep. That happens by either putting on a color filter on your phone, putting on, um, you know, blue light reducing glasses, or putting on a setting in your computer. All right, so what I do is I triple click my home button on my iPhone. I don't know how it, how it works with Androids, but with iPhones, you can put on this color filter where it reduces all the white light, or yeah, the white point light, and it makes everything red. And what that does is it reduces blue light. Now let's talk about blue light for a little bit. Blue light stimulates your brain. Blue light stimulates your pineal gland, and I'll get into that later in this video about the darkness. But blue light, converts melatonin into serotonin, and we'll talk about that later again, but blue light stimulates your brain. You don't want your brain to be stimulated right before you go to bed. You want to stack your external environment in your internal environment's favor. You want to reduce as much blue light as you possibly can. You can do that with your phone, okay? So you don't have any blue light on your phone. You have this red phone. It looks stupid, but you're going to have great sleep. You're going to have delicious sleep. And on your computer, with a program called Flux, everything is red and black and a lot of people ask me why do you have that on all day long well I don't really want my brain to get over simulated during the day let alone right before bed so unless I'm color editing and making this video right when I do the color editing for this there's no blue light I mean there's tons of blue light but there's no blue light filter anyway eliminate blue light as much as you can two one big thing about your brain there's a lot of big things one very important point about your brain is that your brain, my brain, everybody's brain, male and female, works the same. We associate locations with activities. Now this location behind me should be associated with sleep. And if it's not, we need to arrange it so that it's associated with sleep. So, if I'm eating on my bed, if I'm watching movies on my bed, if I'm studying on my bed, if I'm reading on my bed, my brain is associating that location right there with things other than sleep. Now that's wonderful if you have an office and you need to get shit done all the time because when you sit in that chair, you're in that office and you're getting shit all the time, your brain is associating that office with getting stuff done and that's what you want to be doing. But when you're sleeping, it's completely opposite. When you're in your bedroom, you want to be sleeping. You don't want to be getting shit done. You don't want any shit to be getting done at all. You want to be sleeping. <laughs> you want like delicious sleep. So what needs to happen is if you are eating or studying or smoking, or doing anything on your bed other than sleeping, try to do that in another part of your room. It's even better to do that 
in another area in your house, another room in your house. You need to set everything up so that your brain associates your bed with sleep. Eat in your kitchen, eat in your dining room, do studying in the office, do studying in some other room. Go fucking read on the couch, you know what I'm saying? Just do that stuff outside of your bedroom, not on your bed. Three, darkness. Come to the dark side. Darkness, okay. The darkness part is where you really get to cultivate that delicious part of the sleep. This is where the real deliciousness comes out, all right? I noted before about the blue light, how blue light stimulates the pineal gland. There's a bit of scientific explanation behind the darkness. The pineal gland is responsible for a number of things. One of them is melatonin, and melatonin is that really delicious, it's responsible for a really warm, delicious feeling. You know what I mean? Melatonin is created when you sleep, and melatonin gets converted to serotonin when your pineal gland is stimulated by blue light, okay? So the more darkness that you have, if you can have complete darkness, it's perfect, but when you don't have blue light during night, your brain and your pineal gland especially is creating and is producing the maximum amount of melatonin. If you have a little bit of blue light, then it's producing a little bit less melatonin. And when you wake up and you see light, when you turn your light on, it's gonna get converted into serotonin. What happens with that is serotonin, we all know, is the happy chemical. Okay, dopamine is the happy chemical. We also have serotonin. Serotonin is responsible for energy spikes. It's responsible for reward. It hits your reward and pleasure centers, okay? So it also alleviates any sort of depression when you wake up. And in a properly functioning and a healthy human, when you wake up, you shouldn't be feeling depressed. A lot of us deal with depression, especially when we wake up. Some of the first thoughts that come to mind are like, fuck, I gotta get out of the bed. Fuck, I gotta do life. Fuck, I gotta go to work. Fuck, I gotta eat. I gotta, I gotta do shit, okay? Fuck, I gotta live, okay? I've dealt with this in the past before. Darkness, really, darkness is a huge, huge aspect of depression. And I think that not enough people understand what the hell is going on eight hours in a day and how that's affecting the rest of the 16. So, one thing that you can do, most of us have windows in our rooms, okay? One thing that you can do is black out your windows, okay? There's a reason that there's this really weird and big curtain behind me and it's black and it doesn't allow any light in. Behind that curtain is a cardboarded window. It looks sketchy as hell from the outside. On the outside it looks like, is this home in foreclosure? My condo looks super sketchy from the outside because it's just like this cardboard face behind the window. It's not sketchy because they get to have amazing delicious sleep every single night because when I turn off the lights here, there is no light. Noon in Vegas, it's bright as hell outside. In my room, there is absolutely no light. It's like being in the middle of a cave. No light whatsoever. Melatonin flowing through my body, flowing through my brain. When I wake up, I get a gentle salt lamp. I can talk about that later in a morning routine, but I get a nice wake up, a gentle salt lamp, get the serotonin gently hitting my brain, activating and making me happy, not making me want to kill myself, not making your ancestors want to kill themselves, so that you're here now, okay? This is how that shit worked for a long time. I get into it more, I'm not going to, I get into it more in the morning routine, okay? But the big thing here is darkness. Darkness allows you to wake up and have that like, wow, that sleep was what? Delicious, that's right. Four, I mentioned before, phone, okay? One more thing that your brain associates with activities are things. Location, it associates with activities, and things, it associates with activities. So, most of us with our phones, at least me, my brain subconsciously associates communication and dopamine with my phone. Okay, so whenever I have my phone in my hand, there's a little bit of my brain that's expecting, okay, I'm gonna get a dopamine spike. Okay, I need to communicate with somebody. And we don't want that to be activated in our brain when we're trying to sleep. When we're trying to sleep, we don't want any sort of brain activity going on whatsoever. We need to be fucking brain dead. I happen to have an attached bathroom right here, and I always leave my phone in the bathroom. Even though it's just past the door in the other room, technically it's another room, my brain kind of less associates this space with my phone, and therefore it associates this space less with communication and dopamine spikes and activity, brain activity, okay? So when it goes off in the morning and there's an alarm, I can still hear it, even with earplugs in, I have earplugs when I sleep, that's another thing, not that important, but when I get into the bathroom, that's totally fine if I need to think about communicating with people if I want to have dopamine spikes because of my phone. But when I'm here, on my bed, in my bedroom, I'm here to sleep. Cool? Cool. Five. This was a big one for me. Reduce snoring. 
I didn't know this until last summer, but when you're snoring, you're not getting really any sort of benefit from your sleep. You're just kind of laying there. Okay, yeah, you are technically sleeping and you're not conscious, but you're not getting deep sleep and your brain isn't properly functioning as it should during sleep. Okay, snoring is kind of this weird thing that happens where we trip ourselves up when our uvula drops down with our tongue relaxes and some bullshit happens and you sound like you're sawing wood. We all know that, but when you're snoring, you're not really getting any sort of benefit from your sleep. Now, there's a way to prevent that, okay? The way that I prevent that is by putting in a mouth guard. I put in a mouth guard. It's called the Z-Quiet. I'll link it down in the comments, down in the description below. I get no kickback off of it. I'm not an affiliate. I just think it's wonderful. It's been doing wonderful things for me during that eight hours at night. And I don't snore, okay? I was snoring before, and I don't anymore. And I can really tell the difference. And if I don't put that in, and if I don't wear that mouth guard for an entire night, I can really feel the difference the next day. The next day, yeah, I did sleep, but I don't have that, like, focus. I'm not, like, totally there the next day. But when I do put it in and I don't snore and I get the really, really deep sleep, which is, like, pure, no interruptions whatsoever, I never wake myself up because of snoring, I can really feel that focus, especially when I'm talking to you, looking you dead in the eye. I'm here, getting delicious sleep every single night. It's wonderful. Six, your sleeping outfit. I mentioned two times that your brain associates things with activities. One of them is devices, things that you can hold. Another thing is location, okay? One of those, the third big one, is your clothes. Your brain associates your clothes and what you're wearing with the activities that you're doing them, okay? So, what do you think would be easier? Would it be easier to fall asleep if you wore the same thing to bed every single night? Or, would it be easier to fall asleep if you wore your work uniform to bed? Granted, they're the same comfort level. They're both silky smooth. Which one would be easier? It would be a million times easier to fall asleep if you put on your pajamas, your pajamas, which you wear to bed every single night. Why? Because your brain associates what you're wearing with the activity that you do and what you're wearing regularly. Okay? So if you're working and you're in task mode all the time, and you put on those clothes and then you try to rest and relax, well, it's not conducive. Yes, it could still happen, obviously. You can still have, fall asleep and stuff. I'm not saying you can't fall asleep in your work uniform. A lot of us want to fall asleep when we're working. I get that. But when you want to set up yourself and you want to set up your external environment and your internal environment's favor, wear the same thing to bed every day. This is something that I struggle with because I'm like, fuck it, I'm, I'm comfortable right now. I'll just go to sleep. I'll just lay in this shit. It's the same clothes anyway. But I need to make a concited effort to put on the same outfit every single night. Wear the same shit to bed every single night. When you put on those pajamas, part of your brain's gonna be like, oh, I'm expecting sleep because that's what happens every single time that I put on these clothes. Last but definitely not least, meditate. Big surprise here, Evan recommends meditation. Meditation was the thing that really got me in to experimenting with and refining the way that I sleep. Meditation is also the single most important thing that you can do before you go to bed. It's the biggest out of all seven. Well, no, yeah, it's the biggest out of all seven of these tips is meditate. Ten a million times more powerful than all other six combined. Swear to God. You meditate for ten minutes before you go to bed, you will have the most blissful and delicious sleep of your entire life. You do that every single night and it will compound, okay? One big thing about sleep is that it is a skill. I didn't mention this in the beginning, but sleep is a skill. Sleep takes on the laws of momentum, and sleep also abides by the compound effect. Basically what I'm trying to say is that good sleep breeds good sleep, okay? Meditation will set your body up. Not only your mind, but your body. It relax your body, it relax your mind, and you will have blissful, delicious sleep. If you do it every night, you're gonna have delicious sleep every night. And it's gonna get easier and easier and easier and easier. And when I talk about my morning routine, which is kind of the reflection of this, okay, this is kind of like a nightly routine, a morning routine, I also meditate in the morning. And I have beautiful, blissful, delicious awake time, okay? We're not talking about awake time right now. We're talking about sleeping time, okay? Meditation will allow you to let go of everything that happened in that first 16 hours. Now we have the last eight hours of the 24 cycle. 
that 16 hours needs to be kind of worked through. Meditation only takes 10 minutes. We'll allow that to happen. Allow anything that needs to come to the surface, come to the surface. Allows the mind to settle as things come to the surface and release, to let go. What do you want to do when you sleep? You want to let go. I'm going to provide a link down below to get started with meditation. I get no kickback from recommending Headspace. It's something that I love. It's the number one greatest thing that I've ever done for myself. Not only meditation, but Headspace itself. Okay? Headspace is how I learned to meditate. I'd recommend it to anybody. Whether you are meditating already, if you've never done it before, it's the perfect way to get into it. You develop a daily regimen. It compounds upon itself. It gets easier and easier and easier and easier. And then it just becomes natural to meditate 10 minutes before bed. It only takes 10 minutes. 10 minutes and then you set up the rest of the eight hours for just delicious, beautiful sleep. Oh my God, it's so amazing. Every, when I say this, I'm not joking. Every single night. I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't get delicious sleep every single night. The next 16 hours, you're ready to crank it. Fucking crank it every single day. Why? Because you took the 10 minutes right before you went to bed to put everything down, to put all your distractions away, to spend a little bit of time with yourself, and then knock out for the night and rejuvenate, okay? I hope you got value out of this video. I hope you get to see a little bit more about me and my life and what I go through eight hours of the day. What I'm talking about in this video is a third of my entire life. I'm not gonna show you me sleeping, all right? That'd be pretty boring, but I'm gonna show you what I do and how I set up my life so that I can sleep in the greatest fidelity possible. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you implement at least one of these things. If there's one thing you implement, make it meditation. Fuck everything else, but implement everything, and then you can have even more blissful sleep, okay? So enjoy yourself, enjoy your sleep, enjoy your awake time. I hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.